Hi there, everyone. I'm meteorologist Ashley Baylor with a check of your latest forecast. Well, of course, our focus is definitely on Hurricane Irma. Still a major Category 3 hurricane with wind sustained at 125 miles per hour. As you can see, the eye was skirting just over the northern coast of Cuba, so it did cause it to weaken back to a Category 3 storm after it was a Category 5 just last night. But now it's starting to make the turn towards the Florida Keys, so it could potentially gain a little bit of strength and become a Category 4 hurricane by the time it makes landfall over the Florida Keys. But of course, Irma is not the only storm we are focused on. We have Hurricane Jose spinning out there as well, just north of the Lesser Antilles. That's actually a slightly stronger storm with winds sustained at 145 miles per hour. I'll put a track on that for you in just a minute, but let's focus our attention on Hurricane Irma just because at this point it is the imminent threat to the U.S. So as you can see, Southern Florida already tapping into some of those outer bands. They are experiencing tropical storm conditions right now. Of course, hurricane conditions expected within the next, mm, let's call it a uh, less than 12 hours or so. So you can see the eye going to start to make its northerly turn towards the Florida Keys. Let's actually put the latest track on this for you and let you know that there is the potential for secondary landfall after the Keys. So here's a look at Irma right now, Category 3 hurricane. As it goes into the open water, again, it could strengthen to a Category 4 hurricane by the time it makes landfall, possibly somewhere near Big Pine Key or possibly Key West with winds up to about 130 miles per hour. Now, as it kind of stays in the water for a little bit, it could make a secondary landfall, as I said, near Siesta Key or possibly Sarasota as a Category 4 hurricane with winds picking up to 140 miles per hour. The longer it stays in that water, the more strength it could get because that is like bath water out there. It's going to tap in to a lot of that Gulf moisture and cause it to uh, gradually strengthen. As you can see, it's going to basically hug the Gulf Coast of Florida all the way through Monday. So it has the potential to remain a major Category 3 hurricane all the way into the Florida panhandle. So that's pretty incredible that, again, just based on sheer size and path of this storm, it is going to affect the entire state. And at one point or another, notice that a good chunk of the state is going to be in that northeast quadrant. Again, at one point or another as it makes its uh, track to the north. And in that northeast quadrant is where we do expect not only some of the strongest winds, but the heaviest rain, and that's the spot that will also be susceptible to tornadoes. So uh, this is going to be a pretty devastating situation almost for the entire state. Now, as you can see, Irma could even hold on to Category 1 hurricane strength, or at least a very strong tropical storm by the time it makes its way into Georgia, and then eventually Irma will fizzle out to just an area of low pressure by the time we get to Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, moving into Tennessee, Kentucky, and eventually into Missouri. So it is going to stay well west of Hampton Roads. Hurricane Warnings have been posted, again, almost for the entire state. And as you can see, that hurricane warning now extends into southern parts of Georgia. As for us here in Hampton Roads, the effects will be pretty minimal. Going into Monday night and Tuesday, winds will pick up out of the east at about 10 to 20 miles per hour. Slightly higher gusts at times, nothing to really write home about. As far as rain goes, it'll be on and off starting Monday evening, continuing through Tuesday. It'll only amount to about a quarter to a half inch. And so, again, nothing significant there. We could see some nuisance tidal flooding during high tide Monday and Tuesday. So if you live in an area that's susceptible to tidal flooding, you kind of know what to expect. But again, those effects, uh, nothing really you know, crazy, significant, I guess I said, nothing to write home about. Here's a look at the forecast track for Jose. Right now, a Category 4 hurricane, it is expected to make a northwest turn and kind of loop around, kind of hang out in the Atlantic for a little while. But I want to show you our spaghetti models here because those are the ones that become a little more interesting. So as you can see, at least uh, going into most of next week, Jose will kind of, again, kind of loop around in the Atlantic. But what's even more interesting is that some of our models, once it's done kind of looping, want to make it so it takes a turn towards the East Coast. Not saying it's going to make landfall anywhere along the East Coast, but at least come maybe a little close for comfort according to some of our latest forecast models. But that wouldn't be until about Monday and Tuesday, September 18th and 19th. So I will say, once we put Irma in our rearview mirror, our attention will turn to Jose and just to see what that does over the next week. Here's a look at our seven day forecast. Once we get past Tuesday, we're back into the sunshine Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, our pattern will be a little bit unsettled, so there will be a few chances for showers with highs in the low 80s.